You are about to see the official film report of Operation Greenhouse. Greenhouse was one of a series of tests conducted at the Atomic Energy Commission's proving ground at Anahuitoc. It was completed in the spring of 1951. Greenhouse was routine in one sense, but should not be confused with previous tests. Greenhouse has a place distinct and apart. While Crossroads tested the effects of atomic bombs and Sandstone concentrated on weapon improvement studies, Greenhouse was planned to further both of these achievements and more. Specific purposes of Operation Greenhouse now accomplished stand out. A, lighter, smaller, and more efficient weapons for our atomic arsenal. B, offensive and defensive effects information on animals, structures, aircraft, tanks, and so forth. C, basic experiments of the thermonuclear problem. We believe this film to be a true presentation of the operation. It stresses underlying theme, the reasons for Greenhouse. It cannot always give credit to the thousands of individuals who made it possible. As commander of Joint Task Force 3, I invite you to see a documentary portrayal of an operation which many agencies and unnumbered men achieved in the Central Pacific, an atomic test. It's all over now. Only the radioactive dust of the four test shots remain. Operation Greenhouse is history. But if this be history, what does it say? What was learned from the shots fired at Runnet, at Enjabi, at Eberiru in the spring of 1951? What was done to warrant the expenditure of thousands of man hours of work, of millions of dollars? Just what significance does Greenhouse have in the gallery of atomic tests? Operation Greenhouse, Joint Task Force 3, starts like a puzzle with a thousand scattered pieces. One of these pieces fits into place at 12th and Constitution, Washington, D.C. This is headquarters for Joint Task Force 3. Here, during the greater part of 1950, activity centers around complex organizational problems. This is the clearing house, the meeting place, where both the services and the scientists work out mutual problems. Here men come to grips with the million and one details connected with an operation of the magnitude of Greenhouse. Details that can become as wearisome and heavy as an aching tooth, but which also cannot be ignored. Consider just one item, transportation, docks and ships, airfields and planes, plotted on sheets of paper, on schedule. 14 to 15,000 tons per month by water, outward bound from San Francisco, five days to Hawaii, six days to any Weetok, transportation for normal cargo or high priority cargo. Transportation by air, 7,300 passengers, 940 tons of freight from the United States to Kwajalein to any Weetok. Yes, planning, organization, Amazing detail. The story of Headquarters Joint Task Force 3 during these hectic preparatory days is a story of the valuable function of support. Support, a part of the how of Greenhouse, but not the why. The why of Greenhouse starts in the summer of 1948. Starts at Los Alamos, New Mexico. Begins in this, an isolated experimental factory set up for a specific purpose to design and develop atomic weapons. In the shadow of the Hamas Mountains, work progresses steadily, as it has from the laboratory's beginning in 1943. Since then, to the summer of 1948, men from this plateau have left this country twice before to test the weapons they have created. Go ahead, Los Alamos. We return to the hill from the sandstone test with new and important information. 
information that would enable us to make a sizable contribution to the generally rising curve of man's knowledge of atomic weapons. Information that would help us tackle basic problems involved in high explosive systems, pit design, core arrangement, initiators. Information that would enable us to increase the small percentage of active material that actually burns during fission. The more efficient use of fissionable material has been and continues to be one of our main objectives. For it is the fissile material itself whether uranium-235 or plutonium, that is the expensive, the elaborately complicated material to produce. The nuclear material is the heart of all our attempts to make bombs economically feasible. At Trinity in 1945, we proved a self-sustaining reaction could become an explosive force and that the implosion principle was sound. We had a starting point. The drops on Japan were strictly a war measure. At Hiroshima, we tried the gun principle and also used uranium for the first time. The Nagasaki weapon was an implosion type using plutonium. Little or no controlled experimentation was possible. Thus, little data was obtained which furthered the progress of weapon design. As a result of the Japan detonations, the effects from an atomic explosion became of prime concern to the armed forces. Thus, Crossroads with its two plutonium-type weapons, both using an implosion system. At Crossroads, since we were mainly interested in testing naval materiel, little data was obtained from the Abel and Baker shots on weapon development. However, significant effects knowledge was obtained. Stateside laboratory research, in the meantime, developed new weapons for the sandstone tests. At sandstone, we were once again able to tackle the big problem, more efficient use of fissile material. Here, we were able to utilize uranium-235 in an implosion-type weapon. So, as time went on, we had increased our knowledge of weapon design and had, therefore, increased yield per kilogram of active material. This is where we stood by the end of sandstone. But, while this was satisfying progress, new possibilities already loomed on the horizon. Even while still unpacking our suitcases from the sandstone tests, thinking was in order for the next operation, for a new test program, Greenhouse. It is apparent that controlled testing, such as that at Trinity and Sandstone, is essential for continued progress in the development of atomic weapons. It is equally obvious that testing at a proving ground is to be a permanent feature of our work. So a proof test division, known as J Division, is organized. Dr. Alvin C. Graves is selected to head this division, a unit with the specific job of testing weapons. By autumn of 48, a test program is framed. This calls for experimentation of new weapon designs with the objective of again moving our knowledge curve upward to a more effective level. Operation Greenhouse, a logical sequence to sandstone, is in the making. Once more, we propose to better yield per kilogram invested. Greenhouse may take us a long way in the direction of smaller weapons. For the first time, deliverability in terms of size and weight is expected to make its mark in improved weapon design. Greenhouse will also give us direction as to what road to follow in the development of a thermonuclear weapon. This is the beginning, the first step in the long road to make Greenhouse a reality. It is desirable to obtain an early approval of the test program, for a major lesson had been learned from Sandstone. Thus, Time is an essential ingredient. Time for preparation. Time for organization. With time, the most value for a given dollar spent will be accomplished. Besides, time to prepare for active participation is indispensable to the military services. We in the services received the announcement of the proposed 51 tests with high interest. There were many tests we hadn't had an opportunity to run during Operation Sandstone. 
As a result, there were gaping holes in our offensive and defensive thinking about atomic weapons. Naturally, then, we were anxious to conduct experiments in an operation such as Greenhouse. At first, each service worked out its own program separately. Working independently in this way, there was overlapping and duplication. Later, we began to condense our tests into a unified, workable program after we had met with AEC scientists and understood more about the test shots and the limitations facing us. And so, while the play is being written, the actors selected. The Military Liaison Committee recommends to the Joint Chiefs of Staff that now the time is right to tie all the loose ends together. To start the ball rolling, General Quesada is nominated as Task Force Commander and heads a temporary Joint Proof Test Committee. This committee functions for some five months. Based largely on experience gained from Operation Sandstone, it develops the basic plan for Greenhouse. The Proof Test Committee gradually merges, gathering members into a full-fledged unit 